Well, every day here on your 5 News First at 4, we've been welcoming on local doctors and medical professionals to discuss the COVID-19 pandemic. We've also been getting a lot of questions from you in regard to the stimulus checks and the economy as a whole. So today we are joined by Mervyn Jebaraj. He is the director of the Center for Business and Economic Research at the University of Arkansas. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. So we got hundreds of questions for you. We will only get to probably a dozen today, but thank you for your time. We want to start uh, with an overview. What is the CARES Act that was passed by the federal government, and how will it benefit individuals and then businesses? So there's a lot of things in the CARES Act. The CARES Act has been unprecedented in size for any type of aid that the federal government has ever offered uh, for the economy. So $2 trillion is a lot of money, and they have allocated a lot of money to a lot of different people and so they go out to individuals uh, to states and local governments and to businesses so the biggest chunk of the money obviously uh, goes to those twelve hundred dollar checks that people are going to get uh, twenty four hundred dollars if you're married and part of a household and we can talk about those details later five hundred dollars for dependents um, and then the next biggest chunk really goes to providing money to businesses, both large and small. That's about 850 or so billion dollars out of that two, uh, 2.3 trillion dollars. And again, that money goes to businesses to maintain their operations, uh, do their payroll, other fixed costs that they might have, like rent and utilities or uh, loan payments that they might have. And then there's a chunk of money in there for hospitals to deal with the amount of money that they're spending to uh, pay for improvements to their facilities, to care for more people, uh, to purchase equipment that they need to care for more people related to this particular uh, crisis. And then there's money for states and local governments as well, again, to deal with expenses uh, related to things that they have purchased. Again, states have been going out and purchasing uh, ventilators, protective equipment, disinfectants, things like that. Uh, so that's to reimburse state and local governments for those related expenditures and other things that they might do to enable remote working, you know, increase the staffing that they have for certain programs to provide services a lot faster. Uh, so the money goes specifically to COVID related expenses for state and local governments. So those are uh, sort of the big chunks of the uh, $2.3 trillion CARES Act. And then the other piece of that is extended unemployment benefits. So the amount of unemployment benefits increases by about $600 on top of what the state would normally offer. And in addition to that, it also extends the length of time that unemployment benefits are available for uh, in addition to what the state would typically offer. So there's a lot of different pieces to the sure. CARES Act. Um, and it affects just about every piece of our economy. Yeah, there's a lot to unpack there. First, let's start with that $600 unemployment check on the federal level that's coming through the state governments. Is that something that someone who qualifies for will have to pay taxes on later? Yes, yeah, so everything that you get in the form of unemployment benefits is just income replacement. So it counts as income for tax purposes. So uh, the state on a typical basis offers about, you know, somewhere from $81 to $451 per week uh, as part of your unemployment benefits. And so they're adding $600 to that. So the minimum anybody would get now would be $681 to all the way up to uh, $1,050. And that is income replacement. So you do report all of that on your taxes for 2020 when you file it next year. All of that is your income for this time period. And how is that number determined? Who gets $81 and who gets way more? So I think the state typically uh, covers less than half of your uh, ordinary paycheck. And there's a whole slew of different uh, uh, metrics that they use to figure out how much of your income is covered. So it really depends on what your salary that you were making was on an hourly basis and then how many hours you worked. Uh, to determine sort of what that 45-ish percent of what you were making is. And that's where you get $81 a week all the way up to $450 a week. Uh, that's sort of the cap. They're not going to pay more than that if you were getting paid uh, more. If uh, $450 was more than 45% of your income, they're just not going to cover anything more than that. So that's why you see the federal government stepped in with a $600 uh, amount on top of the 81 to 451 dollars because they figured uh, you getting about 40 45 percent of your income was not enough 
and they hope that the $600 would get you a lot closer to 100% of your income. And since Arkansas's wages tend to be lower uh, than uh, the rest of the country, that $600 goes a lot further here in Arkansas. So uh, it gets you a lot closer, if not more than 100% of your income in some cases in Arkansas in a way that it wouldn't in California or New York. Sure. A lot of questions that we saw had to do with the stimulus checks and uh, who qualifies for those along with the payments for dependents. We got this question from Katrina. She said, if someone is over the age of 19 and was claimed as a dependent on taxes, will they get the $1,200 stimulus check or will the person that claimed them get the $500 check or will they receive nothing? Uh, so typically, I think the dependent clause only works for people under 16 that live in your household and some other small exceptions. But generally, you know, I think you've seen a lot of questions about college students, particularly in Fayetteville. Uh, they're often claimed as dependents on their parents' income, but they don't, uh, you know, they might file their own taxes or whatever, but they typically are claimed as dependents on their parents' income in which case their parents are not going to get $500 on their behalf and the college student is not going to get $1,200 on their own either. So that's kind of one of the drawbacks of the way they set this up. Uh, you have to remember that they kind of rushed through this process. They went for speed uh, more than anything else and the information that they had access to that they can verify very quickly and work very fast with uh, is the tax information that you file every year with the IRS. So they're using the tax database to provide payments to people. So everybody that counts as a dependent on there in that system typically only applies to people under the age of 16 living in the household. So if you're a dependent and you're in college, you're not going to get, your parents are not going to get the $500, you're not going to get the $1,200. So unfortunately, they're just going to be left out until Congress goes back and tries to fix that particular system. But there are other people too. For example, if uh, some, you're caring for somebody with disabilities in your household, they're not receiving disability income, but you are claiming them as an dependent on your taxes, uh, then they don't receive, uh, depending on their age, they don't receive the $500 and they don't receive the $1,200 either. So there are a couple of gaps there. Uh, again, the vast majority of the population is going to get some form of a check, either $1,200 uh, or $2,400 for the household or some reduced amount, depending on your income, up to $150,000 or up to $198,000. It depends, but there is going to be some percent of the population that is not going to get any of those checks because they are dependents and they don't qualify under the rules that are currently set up. Now, of course, Congress can go back and fix that, but they would also need to come up with a system to gather information from them. And so even if they do try to fix that system, it is gonna be a while to get those checks sure. because again, they have the IRS information, they don't have this other information right now. Right. Well, we have so many more questions to get uh, to you and get your answers with. We'll have those coming up after this break. First though, let's check in with Garrett for a look at your forecast. Back now with Mervyn Jeberaj. He's a U of A economist talking about the economic impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, we have a final question for you from Heather this afternoon asking, how will the stimulus checks impact our taxes when we do 2020 tax returns next year? Will it be included as income for the year? Uh, she's seen varying answers to this. So, so where do things stand with that? Uh, if you're getting $1,200 or $2,400, you are not paying taxes on it. It is set up as an economic impact payment. Uh, it doesn't count towards your income that would be calculated for taxes uh, for 2020 when you pay it in 2021. So you do not have to pay taxes on the $1,200 that you get. Uh, however, if your income did not qualify you for the payment uh, based on your 2019 income, when you file for your 2020 taxes in 2021, they will actually give you the money then. So even though it may not do you a whole lot of good to wait for the money until a year later, they will give you the money at some point in the future if your income has changed between 2019 and 2020 and you didn't qualify based on your 2019 income. But otherwise, you're not going to pay taxes on this uh, payment that you're getting from the federal government. All right, good information there. Thank you so much. We'll have one final thought with you after the break. Thank you.